Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is May the 8th, 2018. Let's talk cryptocurrency. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, cryptocurrency's upside is huge. But understand, not a lot of people know about cryptocurrency. Right? There's a cryptocurrency community that's growing exponentially every day. But then you have the vast majority of older people, particularly baby boomers, who have never owned a crypto, who vaguely have an understanding that there's a cryptocurrency market out there, but who themselves feel it's too risky, that it doesn't have any practical use. Now, let me say this. It's very important then that crypto actually be portrayed in mainstream media, right? Because that's going to be the introduction many people have to the concept and usage of cryptocurrency. Showtime's last episode of its hit show, Billions, has a money manager, Bobby Axelrod, talking in his office to a trader who's been fined more than $180,000, right? The trader has helped Axelrod in a criminal investigation against Axelrod. The trader has fallen on his sword, so to speak. The SEC has stepped in and has fined him more than $180,000. So Axelrod's in his office with the trader. It's a key part of the most recent episode of Billions. And Axelrod takes out a checkbook. And he writes his underling a check for more than $180,000 to cover the SEC fine. After he does that, the show hits another level. Axelrod takes out of his pocket a ledger wallet. And he says to his underling, this is for you. It's a million dollars worth of cryptocurrency. Right, Axelrod then gives it to the underling who leaves the office. And in a very interesting moment, the underling doesn't seem overwhelmed by receiving the million dollars. So Axelrod, who's an experienced Wall Street money manager, right? He's big time in the world of fiat currency. Axelrod looks at his inner circle and says, wow, you would think this guy would be more grateful for the million dollars, basically. Now that exchange is very important. Let me just say this. <clears throat> it's not the first time, by the way, the people behind Billions have introduced cryptocurrency. Now they've gone as far as to actually have Axelrod with a ledger wallet. It's very important for a host of reasons. First, it's clear that for the public money, the transactions that Axelrod's not afraid of having traced Axelrod will write a check, right? He writes a check for more than $180,000. But for the transactions that Axelrod wants to keep private, he pays those using cryptocurrency and a ledger wallet, right? Now let's bring this to the real world. Let me also say this too. Axelrod who knows fiat currency? He's supposed to be a stud on Wall Street in the show. Axelrod understands that a million dollars of crypto is worth at least a million dollars of fiat currency. The two are interchangeable. Let me say this too, to his underling, who's supposed to be a Wall Street trader, who's supposed to live in the world of dealing in securities, the underling doesn't seem phased by the million dollars. It could be because the underling is just 
depressed. That's a distinct possibility given the storyline in the show. Right? He's just crossed the line for Bobby Axelrod. It could also be that the underling didn't understand that Axelrod giving him what looks like a thumb drive with a million dollars in cryptocurrency on it would be the equivalent of Axelrod giving him a million dollars in gold bullion. Right? Understand. Gold, limited supply. Cryptocurrency, many of them, limited supply. Right? The difference is that the underling was able to get up and leave with the million dollars worth of crypto. The underling would have had to have called in France to help him haul off a million dollars worth of gold. Now, let me say this. <clears throat> To those of you who aren't too familiar with crypto right now, who are watching this video, understand that the privacy of the crypto is related to the type of crypto it is. It's understood on a show billions that the $1 million transfer is a private transaction. So it couldn't have been done with Bitcoin which actually leaves a trail. Understand, Bitcoin deals in the world of pseudonyms, but once someone figures out your Bitcoin address, they can track all the transactions you've done using that address, right? For those of you who don't know, just Google Bitcoin Explorer. Punch in your Bitcoin address. They'll have transactions you've done going back hundreds of days, right? Understand, if the police are investigating you, they're much better off, much better off finding out your secrets if you've used Bitcoin than if you've used cash, right? Cash leaves your hands, it's gone, right? If you're not using the traditional banking system. Bitcoin leaves your hands Guess what? Someone can reverse engineer your Bitcoin address and can actually see where you sent the money. So implicit, implicit in the scene from billions. And it's important because understand, this is how cryptocurrency is portrayed in the media. This is the understanding, the first impression of cryptocurrency that many people watching Billions are having, right? The premise of Billions is that the transaction is private, right? So understand that limits the coins Axelrod could have used to privacy-centric coins, a subset of cryptocurrency. As I've been here online saying for months, understand it's the private nature of cryptocurrency that's going to attract people like Bobby Axelrod to the technology. Right? Of all the crypto coins out there, I believe it's the privacy-centric cryptocurrencies that arguably have the most upside. So you want to focus on privacy-centric cryptocurrencies as part of your crypto portfolio. Let's talk about them, right? Think in terms of cryptocurrencies that operate like cash. So you have digital cash, otherwise known as Dash. You have the coin that's split off from Dash, PIVX, P-I-V-X. You have Monero. Ring signature is one of the highest levels of privacy in the crypto sphere. You have Zcash, you have Zencash, you have Verge, which recently reached a deal with an adult entertainment consortium. Right? The inference is that some of the people who are buying porn online might want to do so privately. They might not want to use a credit card with their name and address, right? Enter Verge Cryptocurrency. You want to think hard about these coins, Z Classic's another one, 
right? And you want to look at the different degrees of privacy they give you, right? In my opinion, Zencash, Zcash, Z Classic, Monero offer the highest levels of privacy. But there is a little bit of a trade off, right? Understand, my favorite cryptocurrency is Dash. Best governance in the crypto sphere, as far as I'm concerned. Dash might not have the level of privacy that a Zencash has. But Dash has a level of convenience that these other coins will have a hard time matching, right? So, I know it's a long running theme here of mine online. You wanna take a look at the privacy centric coins, right? Because many people are gonna be attracted to cryptocurrency because of the privacy it offers. Then they'll find out that Litecoin, Bitcoin, Popular coins like that don't offer the privacy, right? Eventually, they'll dig deeper. They'll find the coins that do. I've just named many of them, right? Let's talk about a major motion picture that's going to hit that has the potential to introduce the concept of privacy-centric cryptocurrency to a new audience. Right, this June, the movie Superfly is going to hit. Right, I've posted a link to the trailer at black7777.blogspot.com. Now, the premise of Superfly, and it's a remake of a movie from the early 70s. Right, let me just say as an aside, I haven't heard the soundtrack of the new movie they have their work cut out for them. They're going to match the Curtis Mayfield soundtrack of the original movie, right? Be that as it may, we'll see if they do, right? The original was based in New York City, a black mecca in the early 1970s. This one, updated, is based in Atlanta. Now, in the trailer, the trailer is very well done. The lead character who is involved, let's say, on the illegal side of life, right? The lead character has to do a big transaction. You understand just from the wads of cash that he's carrying around that he likes privacy, right? He's not walking around with a checkbook with a bank account number that can be traced. No, he's walking around with cash. This is someone who deals in the cash world. And he has to do a big transaction. So part of the trailer has him taking out a tablet or a big cell phone. It's hard to tell. And doing a cryptocurrency transaction. Right now, here again, because he's, we'll say, in the game, the illegal part of life, and because the lead character values privacy, you understand that this transaction isn't being done with Bitcoin. It's not being done from some Bitcoin address where the police don't even have to search the guy's house. They could just go online, plug in the address, and see all the transactions the lead character has done. No. You understand from the video that the transaction is a privacy-oriented transaction, right? You understand that firmly. So just food for thought, privacy-centric coins are hitting mainstream media, right? Expect a greater awareness of them. And as I've said many times here online, Many people use privacy-centric coins. Let me raise my hand, right? For the same reasons they use cash, right? If I'm out and I'm buying a newspaper, I might not want people to know that I live in the neighborhood, I live close to the newspaper store. I might simply value my privacy. Understand, in the United States, we have a constitutional right to privacy. 
Griswold versus Connecticut, right? For the legally inclined, research that case, right? So really people who value their privacy and want to protect their privacy are simply exercising their constitutional rights. Let me say too, as someone who runs a small business, many times clients will say, hey, I would rather keep our transaction private. It's not even my choice. I want to offer customers things they value. One of those options is privacy, right? So understand there's a market for privacy out there. Not everyone wants to scream to the world, hey, I'm spending X dollars at this vendor, right? Many people don't want to do that. They're operating within the law, but they also want the benefit of their privacy. If you're someone like that, consider Monero, Zcash, Zencash, Pivx, Z Classic, Dash, and Verge. Let me say this too about Zencash. It's big news. One of the best parts of crypto is the passive income it provides you if you operate a master node. Now Zencash, a privacy-centric coin, that's one of the most advanced coins on the market. It's not just a currency. Understand, it's an entire ecosystem where you can do things like send private messages to people. Right? You're talking to your children's teachers and you want to make sure that the message is private. You don't want your kids finding out about the message, particularly when they have access to your computer when you're not home. Right? Zencash gives you the capability to send and receive private encrypted messages. Right? In a way that an internet service provider cannot interfere with. That's important. We're hearing about Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. Uh, many people understand that Facebook, Google make their money uh, selling ads and tailoring the ad experience to your search history. There are those of us who don't want their search history. No. Right? Enter Zencash. Let's just say technologically it's advanced. I believe this is one of the coins that needs to be on your hot list. Well, understand if you have 42 Zencash and you decide to operate a secure node and you go through a site, you don't even have to manually no code. You can go through a site like chainsaw.ninja and they'll set up your, sec your secure node for you. Well, understand, every day you operate that node, you're getting passive income off your 42 coins. Right? Dash Master Node holders know this well. There, you're getting hundreds of dollars every month if you operate a Dash Master Node. Actually, believe it or not, the number's in the thousands. So, a Dash Master Node right now costs you close to half a million dollars. Just understand doing the math, a Zencash Secure Node, right? 42 Zencash, it's going at about $40 a coin right now, costs you less than $1,700. And you're getting passive income. Well, let me just say that Zencash has announced that they're going to more than double the reward later this month that they give out in terms of passive income for operating a secure node, which is very easy to set up. For more information, I encourage you to visit Chainsaw.Ninja, right? Excellent outfit. They'll actually answer your questions if you contact customer service there. You'll be able to find out what your expected payout is and things like that. Understand, you don't have to do anything to get the passive income other than set it up. Right? This takes less effort than renting out real estate you own. Just food for thought. All right. Let's uh, shift gears briefly and talk about big news in crypto that you need to be aware of. In addition to privacy-centric coins... Understand there are platform coins, right? These are the coins that 
create a platform by which others can actually introduce their own coin. So you may have heard of Ethereum. Ethereum right now is selling for more than $700 a coin. There was a time, right, there was a time when you could have picked up Ethereum for less than $5 a coin, right? Understand such is the explosion in Ethereum. You also might have heard of NEO, the Chinese Ethereum, right? Which has more scalability, believe it or not, than Ethereum, right? More centralization, but more scalability, right? Let me say I personally like the decentralization of crypto. So I'm a little concerned whenever I see more centralized coins like Ripple, like NEO. But understand, on these coins, entrepreneurs can then issue their own coins. Well, one group that did so is EOS, right? But EOS is going to debut their own platform. They issued an ERC-20 coin on the Ethereum platform. But let me say this about EOS. Just understand, in early June, if you register your EOS coins, right, in early June, they're going to debut their own mainnet. And the technology is going to be breathtaking, in my opinion, and I own Ethereum. I'm not here bad-mouthing coins I don't own. But in my opinion, EOS is going to far exceed Ethereum in terms of scalability. Let me also say, too, that some of the things that Ethereum's working to implement, right? Ethereum's trying to go from a proof-of-work protocol to a proof-of-stake protocol, right? Um, proof-of-stake is a little bit more, well, a lot more energy efficient, right? And has the capability to work a lot faster. Well, just understand, EOS is going to debut as proof of stake. So, for more information on EOS, I would encourage you to go to EOSCountdown.com. Right? EOS, many people pronounce it EOS, countdown.com. Let me also say, too, that if you want EOS, just understand that changely.com allows you to just exchange the popular coins you have, right? Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, for EOS. You don't even have to deal with exchanges. You could literally do this very quickly and very cheaply on changely.com. Let me also say too, because the EOS initial token, which is really just a placeholder token until EOS debuts its main net, right? The EOS token is an ERC-20 Ethereum token. <laughs> So you should be able to store, in fact, I know you can store EOS in an Ethereum wallet like MyEtherWallet.com, right? Just as you research EOS, see the wallets that it's compatible with, you should be able to store it really in any Ethereum wallet that's not on an exchange, right? Jax, for example, a Jax wallet actually allows you to store EOS on it. You should be able to store EOS in an Ethereum wallet like MyEtherWallet.com and like Jax. And you should be able to look at and confirm that the tokens are at the Ethereum address by going through an Ethereum Explorer. Right? Here's the main point that I want to make to you. When the EOS mainnet drops next month, 
In other words, folks, we're talking about less than four weeks from now. Right? This could be a completely asymmetrical, life-altering opportunity. Right? It might take the market a few days to fully understand that this coin is technologically superior to Ethereum. To the Ethereum crowd, if you beg to differ, and I understand there's discussion here on Merkle trees and things like that, then leave your comments in the comment section to this video so people can see them unfiltered. Right? But I believe as popular as Ethereum has been, once people understand what EOS is offering, the fact that you can build coins on EOS, the fact that EOS's scalability will allow the cryptosphere to match and exceed the volume of Visa and MasterCard, right? Once people understand that EOS does things that makes the cryptosphere much more powerful. And once developers realize that they just have more to work with in developing a coin on the EOS platform, the price of EOS, which already has a market cap that's bigger than Dash, the value of EOS could explode, folks. I believe from a risk-reward perspective, if you're an investor looking for asymmetrical trades where you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to invest this money. I understand the venture is very speculative, is very new. That the EOS mainnet is going to debut next month. If you're someone who invests in startups, who understands that the narrative might fail, right? Maybe... Maybe EOS has bugs. Maybe the technology has holes that some hacker can exploit. Lord knows there are hackers out there. Right? But just understand, if this platform <clears throat> delivers as the features of it suggests, you could be looking at another rapidly growing cryptocurrency as Ethereum was, right? I'm telling you, there are many people watching this video who made hundreds of dollars per coin on Ethereum, and they have dozens of Ethereum coins, right? I think EOS is one of the more intriguing cryptocurrency projects I've come across. Let me say this too. Understand you need to register your EOS tokens with EOS before June 1st, right? What I want you to do is to go to EOSCountdown.com, look at the information, do the research yourself. But understand, right now, all they're issuing are ERC-20 tokens. In other words, all they're issuing right now are placeholder tokens through the Ethereum platform. They're going to convert those over to real EOS next month, right? They did so to receive funding for the work they're doing, right? The only way you'll be able to cash in on EOS will be if you register your ERC-20 tokens, before the main net debuts. Now, one of the best people on YouTube in the cryptosphere is a gentleman called Crypto, right? Let's spell out crypto. It's C-R-Y-P-T with not an O, but a zero at the end of it, right? Crypto with a zero at the end of it instead of the letter O. He has a video called How to Register Your EOS Tokens Using the Ledger Nano S. Now let me say, 
I'm a big believer in hardware wallets, right? I own a ledger, I own a treasure. I believe you want to make as much use of hardware wallets as you can, right? There's so many hackers out there. Get your coins onto your hardware wallet. Understand, you need to guard your private keys religiously. You don't want to have your private keys online where some hacker can break into your computer remotely and steal your private keys and then steal your cryptocurrency, right? What I believe you want to do is transfer your Ethereum and your EOS to a Ledger wallet. Understand, if you have them on your Ledger wallet, you can interface that Ledger wallet with sites like My Ether Wallet. Right? Make sure you're on the correct MyEtherWallet.com. And then you can do transactions. So let me, uh, let me just say, I encourage those of you who want to have a very efficient and very easy way to register your EOS coins, right? There are many steps, but crypto guides you through them. What I want you to do is to Google Crypto's YouTube video called How to Register Your EOS Tokens Using the Ledger Nano S and see what he has to say. He has many valuable links at the bottom of the video that you should use to do things like generate an EOS key, public and private, uh, as well as to go through the protocol, right, to register your EOS coins. I believe much of the world right now has no idea that there is a coin out there that is more advanced than Ethereum, which is about to debut its main net in a matter of weeks, right? I also think many people are intimidated by the idea of going on an exchange to uh, purchase EOS. They don't realize that you could do it by just a simple transaction on Changely without an account, right? They also are intimidated by the idea of storing EOS because they hear ERC-20 coins and that intimidates them, right? They don't realize that you could store EOS on a Jax wallet or at myetherwallet.com, right? My point to you is you have some days here to sit down and learn about EOS and learn how to jump through the hoops. You have excellent resources like Crypto's video, how to register your EOS tokens using the Ledger Nano S. So you can then see how it's done see the value of having a Ledger Nano S. Keep in mind, Bobby Axelrod uses a Ledger Nano S. In other words, the people in the know understand you want a hardware wallet and Ledger is a damn good one, right? Your motivation should be the absolutely absurd profits that EOS could deliver if the technology is as advertised. Understand, the creator of Steemit.com, one of the best sites dealing with cryptocurrency online, Dan Larimore, is actually the person behind EOS. The team is intense. I believe they're going to deliver on the promise. If you're someone who enjoys platform coins, if you have some NEO, if you have some Ethereum, I believe you need to hedge that play 
by also having some EOS, right? There is a distinct possibility that EOS is going to cut into Ethereum's market share. If you're an Ethereum holder, and many are, you want to realize that EOS already has a market cap in the top 10 of all cryptocurrencies. And it's that coin with features that's going to grab a lot of attention once it debuts on the mainnet next month. You have this month to figure out how to get and register your EOS before it happens, right? But understand, this is high risk. This is jumping in on a cryptocurrency on the ground floor. But I'll put it to you this way. One of the biggest criticisms of cryptocurrency is the idea that the ecosystem is not scalable. It's the idea that Visa can handle more transactions per second than the cryptosphere can. Just consider the possibility that EOS, which is gonna debut its mainnet literally in a matter of weeks, that EOS may prove that argument to be false. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.